A central component to modern astrology revolves around the location of the sun as it crosses in front of each of the 12 zodiac constellations. Astrologers divide the zodiac into 12 equal sections of the sky in one of two main ways, using either sidereal or tropical astrology. Neither takes into account the constellation Ophiuchus, which does in fact sit on the ecliptic, or the path of the sun. It's no small constellation either. According to the boundaries defined by the International Astronomical Union, these are the boundaries used by astronomers, the sun spends 18 days from November 29th to December 18th crossing Ophiuchus, while in comparison, it is only in the boundaries of the constellation Scorpius for six days. This makes Ophiuchus the 13th zodiac constellation. Let's draw upon the constellation Ophiuchus to learn more about the night sky. Ophiuchus is Greek for serpent bearer and is usually depicted as a man holding a giant snake. The snake is represented by the constellation Serpents. To the ancient Greeks, Ophiuchus represented the god Apollo, the healer and protector god who slayed the serpent Python that guarded the oracle of Delphi. Apollo's son, Asclepius, was also a healer who carried a snake entwined rod, which has been said to be where we get the similar medical symbol. Of course, this symbol also shows up in the Bible with Moses and his golden serpent staff. In any case, Asclepius has also been associated with the constellation Ophiuchus. While there isn't any evidence of Ophiuchus before the Greeks, it is possible that Nera, the Babylonian serpent god, was associated with this constellation before the classical era. In Christianity, Ophiuchus could depict mankind's struggle with that old serpent called the devil, see Revelations chapter 12. Or he could represent Christ, who bruises the head of the enemy, the constellation Scorpius, as told in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. See also Romans chapter 16, verse 20. So when can you see Ophiuchus? Ophiuchus begins to show up on the eastern horizon after sunset in late April. Between June and July, it culminates or reaches its highest point in the night sky. This would be an ideal time to grab your binoculars and telescopes and observe this constellation and its related celestial objects. By the end of September, it will begin to descend into the western horizon with the sunset. Where can you find Ophiuchus? The location of any constellation always depends on two factors, your time and geographical location. Your location affects the constellation's north and south position. Due to Ophiuchus's position near the ecliptic, to find him, you'll probably need to look more or less south. Unless, of course, you live low in the southern hemisphere, where you'll need to look northward. In the northern hemisphere, look low on the southern horizon for a bright red star that forms part of a fish hook looking constellation. That's Scorpius. Ophiuchus is a large constellation outlined mainly by five stars above Scorpius, and it tilts a little to the east of it. The five stars form a shape that look vaguely like the outline of a house. It's so big and devoid of many bright stars that you could hold your hand out at arm's length, giving a thumbs up, and fit that inside the constellation twice. What celestial objects can you find in Ophiuchus? Here are a few stars and deep sky objects, including star clusters and nebula, to look for as you observe Ophiuchus. There are seven star clusters here listed in the Messier catalog, M9, M10, M12, M14, M19, M62, and M107. All of them are globular clusters, which are large, dense clusters of stars usually found in the outer edges of galaxies. M10 is 20,000 light years from Earth, which is fairly close for a globular cluster. With a magnitude of about 6.6, .6, you should be able to see it even with a small telescope. NGC 6384 is the best galaxy in Ophiuchus to see with an amateur telescope, but it'll probably need to be an 8-inch telescope. It is about 98 million light years away and has an apparent magnitude of about 12. NGC 6240, also called the Starfish Galaxy, looks vaguely like a butterfly. It is actually the result of a merger between three smaller galaxies that have come to form one. Its magnitude is about 13.3. Alpha Ophiuchi, also called Razalhag, meaning the head of the serpent collector, is the brightest star in Ophiuchus. 
It is a binary star about 48 light years away and has an apparent magnitude of 2.05, which is just a little dimmer than the North Star. The Great Dark Horse Nebula is a large area in Ophiuchus covered by a dark nebula. That means it is such a dense nebula that it obscures light or stars that are behind it. Two noteworthy sections of this nebula are B72, the Snake Nebula, and B68, the Ink Spot Nebula. While there are more deep sky objects known in this constellation, these are the more popular ones. Whether you have a telescope or not, I encourage you to find dark skies and spend some time admiring the stars. Let me know if you find Ophiuchus. If you do have a telescope or binoculars, at least see if you can find M10, near the middle of the Serpent Bearer. I tried looking for it with my 4-inch telescope, but I think there was a little too much light pollution because I couldn't see it. Anyway, I'll provide some links to the gear I use in the description below. Also, check out my Constellation infographic stickers on Etsy and get 25% off using the link down below. Look up, keep learning, and remember to smile.